in today's installment of Unpacked. You know, I was young and very ambitious. Why would somebody want to hide powder? Heroin, death sentence. Put me in a truck, uh, not knowing where I was going. This is prison, and you're going to give birth there. You're going to be alone. Remember, you're fighting for your life and for your child's life. That's what I'm leaving you with. Imagine finding yourself being pregnant while in prison. Imagine that you were born in prison. Today's guests are here to tell their stories. Let's unpack. In October 1994, Felicia Goosen was born in a Thailand prison after her mother, Vanessa, a former Miss South Africa finalist, was detained for drug possession. At only three years old, Felicia was separated from her mother and moved to South Africa. After 13 years apart, the mother and daughter were reunited again. This conversation is part one of their story. Let's unpack. Felicia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And welcome to you too, Vanessa. It's such a pleasure to be able to talk to you today. Thank you, Rene Bukhile. Thank you so much for having us. So let's take it back okay. to what was life like before you actually went on that trip and tell us why you were on the trip before you were arrested. Life before was, you know, I was young and very ambitious and full of life. Yes. <laughs> and just thought I could take on the world. But at that time, uh, we had a clothing store in Colton Center. Yes. And also had a... Um, and this was what year? Uh, this was 1994. Yes. 94, yes. Um, yeah, clothing store and loft fashion was my passion. Yeah. And uh, it was really exciting. And we also had like a... Um, like a factory where mm. we would design some clothing because we had uh, different uh, stores, like mm. uh, placing like orders for us, like for linen dresses, et cetera, mm. et cetera. And then also doing modeling as well. Mm. Really enjoyed modeling, entered the Miss South Africa competition, made mm. it to the semifinals. Mm. And that for me was just a cherry on the cake. Very excited uh, to make it at least that far. And the reason why I went to Thailand is because uh, my boyfriend then, he had a friend, his name was Jackson, mm. and he would come seldom to the store. But uh, what always caught my eye was the way guys would dress yes. because we had a men's clothing store. And uh, he would always dress nice. And I would ask him, like, where did he get his clothing from? And he says, mostly in Thailand, Bangkok, mm. his material. And that's where the whole conversation started. And, mm. um, you know, for us to go abroad and to really explore the fashion industry in Thailand. And that is how I went abroad to Thailand. So now um, you're introduced to this whole concept mm. of um, men's fashion in Thailand. And you decide you're going to go on a trip to go and, and, and see if there's anything you can do business-wise. Yes. So you guys, you go on the trip. Does the boyfriend come with you? No, he didn't. He was running the shop at home okay. and the factory as well. So I was the one who went abroad. And you were going to meet the, the friend that you met? Uh, yes, uh, the brother of Jackson that was there. Oh, yes. Yeah, because okay. he asked me if I could bring some engineering book from him for him yes. because he's studying engineering. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, that, that is the way. So t uh, talk me through what happened then come time to travel. Okay, what happened when I was there, uh, I met with uh, Jackson's brother, he came to me, mm -hmm. and then he took uh, and brought the books to me. Mm. Um, and this is still in South Africa? No, 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 that was in Thailand So the, now you're already in Thailand. Yes. Oh, and sorry. Time, yes, yes, no, I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I flew to Thailand, and when I got to Thailand, the first thing that really, like, hit me was the heat. Yes. It's very, very hot. And humid. Humid, and yeah. also that I was pregnant at the time, so very nauseous, made me very sick. Um, especially their food as well. Uh, but uh, got to the, uh, the hotel and stuff like that. And then um, Jackson contacted me to say that his brother, um, his brother Obi, mm. he is going to um, bring uh, the books. Yes. So, and I didn't think anything of the books. You know, it's normal books, I mean, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, just page through one, left it like there. I was more excited exploring and um, really making contact to import material back to South Africa and mm. see what kind of ideas I can pick up in Thailand. Mm. Uh, so the day that I had to return back to South Africa, they had like a random check at the airport. And then I also bought some uh, fashion designer magazines. Mm. And so when I got to the... 
uh, to the airport, you know, they just open everybody's bags and take, check through everything. And this and this is now at the airport in, in Thailand. In Thailand, it's a direct flight. You're getting ready to go yes, home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I got there, they opened the bags and then he um, just went through um, the magazines. But he he just took out the one of the engineering books, and then he took out a small pocket knife and he put it in the spine of the book. And I was still telling the guy, no, you can't do that because it's not my books. You can't yes. do that. So and. And he put it in, he was just smiling at me. I mean... So, so while, uh, so, sorry to cut you there. So before uh, you, you're traveling to come home, what I'm trying to understand is, do they open everybody's things or they specifically picked you out to say, we want to open your bags? No, everybody's bags went through, oh, okay. went through yes. and then everybody had to open their bags and they okay. checked everybody's yes. bags. So, and then the guy took one of the engineering books and then that is where he took out a small pocket knife and as I'm talking to him, he's just smiling at me the whole time and yes. I'm thinking, what's wrong with this guy? Yes. And then he put the knife in the spine of the book, but when he did that, powder came out. Mm. And when I saw that, it's just like, like, why would somebody want to hide powder mm. in a book? Mm. So immediately, you know, I just thought something was not right here. Mm. They took me away and they took me in the small room. And when I got there, the guy took the books, uh, the engineering books, and then he removed the covers from the book. Mm. So in the covers, the front and the back, it was hollowed out in four compartments mm. and it was laid out with powder. Mm. And in the spine of the book, it was compressed in plastic. Mm. And when they removed that, they opened the plastic, put everything on the scale. Mm. And when I saw that, what went to my mind, because by then I was already hyperventilating, mm. um, is that that's cocaine. Why yes. I thought it was cocaine is because on news, people got arrested for cocaine. Yes. I've never seen drugs. I've never yes. used drugs. And when I saw that, I completely panicked. I started to panic. And then the guy um, took a tester and he put some of the powder in the tester and he came to sit next to me and he shaked it and he turned purple. And then he said to me, heroin. I've never heard of heroin. But by then I was already hyperventilating. But, but when he said heroin, I calmed down mm. because it's not cocaine. Yes, yes, I yes. I didn't know what heroin was, yes. but I was happy it's not cocaine. Yes. So when the guy realized, I don't have understanding. So because they were not speaking English. Yes. So he took me and he walked over to me a poster. There was a big, huge poster on the wall and it was written in English. And it said, heroin, death sentence. Wow. So when I saw that, I'm not ready to die. I'm young. I have a life ahead of me. Mm. And that... And you're pregnant. Uh, exactly. And that completely just caused me to hyperventilate. I couldn't breathe. I felt I was having a heart attack. Yeah. And um, then they just took me in a small room and I could see, but I... And I could hear, but I don't really hear and I don't really see because I, I'm so overtaken by fear yeah. and controlled by fear that I could not really focus on what was going on around me. And they laid me on this bed. And as I was laying on this bed, this was the strangest thing at that particular time. I just heard this, like a voice saying to me, get up. So I jumped up and I didn't know why I was doing mm. that. So I jumped up, I just stood there and I realized they want to take an X-ray. Mm. And when this lady came and she pulled me back on the bed and I said to her, no, 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 I can't, I can't. And then she, kept on pulling me and then I realized this lady doesn't understand what I'm saying. Mm. And so I used my arms and I demonstrated to her that Did I'm you? pregnant. Yes. And she still didn't, didn't understand. No, she didn't pay attention. All she wanted to do was to get me on that bed. But then I started getting sick and I started to vomit in the bathroom. But the weirdest thing they did was they, the lady, she took a stick mm. and she went in my vomit. And I really thought this lady's crazy. She's out oh, of my so mind. she was thinking that Only, you had swallowed yes. bags of drugs I swallowed and they it. were coming. Okay, yes. I understand. I, I didn't understand at that time. I yes. didn't know what was going on. Only after when I got to the prison, when they explained to me yes. why they did that. Yes. Because they thought I, I the was... The same as the x-rays. They're trying to see if yes. you've got drugs yes. in you. Yes. So when they brought me back and... Um, did they eventually do the x-ray? No, they didn't okay. do the x-ray. And then they brought me back and I sat, uh, they left me on this bench. Um, and there was a police officer sitting next to me. And, and you know when, when you get shocking news, mm -hmm. it's like you, you actually, you, you, your behavior is just so crazy. You just don't know how, uh, you're not in your, in, your, in your normal frame of mind. Yes. And you know, I got so desperate. I'm sitting there, I felt like my mind is running. Oh, I can't control it. Mm. I felt like I was going crazy. And you know, when you go through something, um, even if you keep things within you, but you have human touch, mm. somebody hug you, mm. or somebody just show concern, yeah. then is when you break. 
and you yeah. kind of get a release. Yeah. So I was looking for a hug. Yes. I was looking so desperate because I felt if I don't take control, I'm going to lose my mind. Yes. And I can't lose my mind. I can't be a vegetable. I yes. need to help myself in this situation. I got so desperate. And you know, when we find ourselves in situations, we get desperate. And that is the time when you do things that you do not think clearly. Yes. Uh, this is something I would never do in normal life. So when the police officer was sitting there, I got up. I got so desperate and he was sitting reading a newspaper. So I got on top of this police officer. I put my nails in his arms and I started screaming like yeah. crazy. You basically were freaking out. Completely. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just needed to hold someone. And I, he got such a shock, pushed me to the floor, he ran out. Then they came and they handcuffed me and they took me away. I was in the minivan with about seven to eight police officers, not knowing where I was going, not knowing what was happening. And no one is speaking in English. No, there was no, there was a, um, only on the other side, that, uh, the guy when he was speaking a little broken English was trying to speak to me. But when we got to this place, uh, uh, what was weird for me, there was chains on the door. Mm. I mean, we have... Uh, police stations mm. and it's open, you know, but this, uh, that's what I was thinking. This is maybe the police station where they, but, but I was just like, why is it locked? It's yeah. got a chain on yeah. and it was dark and they took me out of the minivan and I had police officers all around me and they laughing, laughing the whole time. And I'm just thinking, that's it. I'm going to die. I don't know what they're going to do mm. to me. Um, you know, and when we went in, they removed the chains from the door. And when we went in, uh, the lights went on. Mm. So when the lights went on, I could see double bunk beds and there was a, a television screen and desk. And this guy just said to me, you, sit. So I sat down and then in his little broken English, he was telling me, um, you, sleep upstairs or sleep downstairs? Mm. So I looked at him and I asked him, what's, what's downstairs? Because I could see upstairs was double bunk beds. And I mean, they're in my luggage, wearing the jackets, putting the things on. But... When you're in a situation, things that was important to you become less important. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't interested. You, know, you were worried for I was your life. For my life. Yeah. Because I saw death sentence. And as they were busy putting on my stuff, because I had main stuff and things, they were, I didn't care. And, and this guy was just, they were laughing the whole time. And I, I couldn't get that. Mm. Um, and then I, I say upstairs, he pointed at the double bunk beds and they were laughing. But at that particular time, they were playing porn movies. Wow. And I just sat there and I said to him, I want to go downstairs. What's downstairs? And then he said to me, big, big foreign men. I just heard the word foreign. Mm. And I was just like, okay, take me downstairs. Mm. Somebody must speak English. Yeah. So when I went downstairs, mm. uh, I could get the smell of urine and sweat. And when I got down, there was a big cell on the right side. There was a lot of guys sleeping on the floor. And there was a seven foot space in between. And I was on the left side, a very small cell. So the guy just pointed, the guard just pointed to me to go into the smaller cell. So I went into the smaller cell and I just sat on the floor, rocked back and forth and I was just crying. I was holding my, my knees. Uh, and um, then I just heard this voice, um, this guy with an American accent. And he's like, excuse me, what's your name? And I don't respond. And he's like, excuse me, what's your name? Mm -hmm. And I don't respond. And he says, the reason why I'm calling you, I want you to come out of your cell. Your cell is open, ours is locked, the guards come in at night and they rape the girls and there's nothing we can do about it. I want you to come out of yourself, move, cl move closer where we are so I can protect you. We can protect you through the bars. Mm. But I was scared, I was afraid, I didn't know who to trust. I don't know this man from nowhere and I don't even know who he is. Mm. But then, because there was absolutely nothing in the cells, they pushed through a, a plastic mat for me mm. and a pillowcase. Mm. So they said, use this. So I came out of the cell and I slept in the, the seven foot space, uh, a little bit far away from the, uh, the, their cell. Mm. Um, so this guy, and as he was just starting to talk to me and, and you know, trying to calm me down. But then the guard came in, and every time he comes, they come in, he has a white piece of paper mm. that's folded. But he handed it to the inmates, and they would give him dollars. Mm. So I asked this guy, what is, what is in that paper? Mm. He says, heroin. He's selling it back to the a guard, a prison wow. guard. He's selling it back to the inmates inside. And I'm like, that's what and they, they have arrested money. me for. Yes, yes. No, you still have your money inside because uh, you give the guards money to purchase your food. Oh, okay. They go and purchase, but you never get any change. Yes. Um, 
uh, that's for you to be able. So those guys were buying me food and things, but I just had no appetite to eat. I stayed there for seven days. And after seven days, I went to court. And when I got to court, I didn't understand a thing. The only mm. thing I understood was my name. Yeah. When the judge would say, Wanessa Gossen. Every time he pronounces my name, I had two guards sitting next to me and they would pull me up, put me down. The whole time I was getting so drunk. Every time my name is heard, that's what they did with me. And, and eventually they got me somewhere and put me in a truck, uh, not knowing where I was going. So I eventually ended up at a, a, a prison and it just read, Lord Yal Human Correctional Institution. And um, that's where I went in, and that is where my journey started. Did anybody, when did somebody actually explain to you what was going on? Uh, when I got to the prison, there was an Australian lady yes. um, that, that spoke Thai fluently. So she's the one who was working with the officials yes. and helped to understand the foreigners. Yes. So when she got um, uh, my documents from prison, uh, they actually, because I refused to sign, I didn't understand it was written in Thai. Yeah. And I was like, I don't understand what is this, what is this man saying? Yeah. So eventually when we got to a place where uh, she explained to me what was in it, and they actually increased the books mm. uh, that I had, which I did not have like that. Yeah. They actually wrote their own story in there when she explained to me. So I said to her, it's not like that. Yeah. It was not like that. They took my passport, they took everything. I never got the passport back. Mm. Um, so, and, and then she explained and she said to me that um, you're going to go to court every 12 days, 12 days. So I asked her, when am I going to be sentenced or what's going to happen? And she says, uh, I don't know. It takes two years, three years. We never know. Mm. So, um, yeah, that, that was explained and that I went to court every 12 days and they sentenced me um, like just close to two years. I got sentenced. I got a, I received a death sentence. Mm. which I didn't understand in court. I only understood when I got to prison. And somebody explained And she explained to me, Nola yeah. Blake, and she said to me that uh, you received a death sentence that was commuted to life. That completely freaked me out because I'm mm. counting my sentence because it doesn't mean 25 years. Life doesn't mean 25 years in Thailand. It means 100 years. Mm. So I'm just thinking my age, I'm not going to make it. Mm. What's going to happen to my daughter? I mean, I didn't know I was going to have a daughter at that time, but, but my child. Mm. I, you know, and it started just driving me insane. Mm. Like I started thinking about all these things and there's nobody to talk to you. There's nobody to guide you. They just speak tight to you. And the only word I heard all the time was pai, 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 pai. Didn't understand what it means. So it meant afterwards I learned how to speak Thai. It means go, 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 go. And that's the whole thing, that whole time that they tell you. So in, in that time, in that period that you were busy going to court the whole time, was somebody from home able to communicate with you or the South African embassy? Did anybody no, no, yes, the, ever, did a lawyer get sent to you or anything yes, like the that? The embassy, they came after a very, very long time. They, What's that long time? Uh, I, 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 I would lie if I could tell you now exactly when. I don't remember. Is it like a year? No, 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 it's less than a year. Okay, it's so like a few year. weeks. Yeah. No, 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 not a few weeks. It's a little bit longer than that. Yes. But I don't know specifically how long. Can't remember exactly now. But they came and then got, gave us a list of lawyers that you can get. Yes. Uh, but um, I used um, a court lawyer. Yes. And, uh, you know, he was just laughing all the time. I don't know. But after I learned with this laughing thing, they smile and laugh at everything. If you fall and you fall dead, they laugh. It's funny. It's just a, <laughs> it's a, just a, a cultural culture thing. Yes, yes. And I was just like, something is wrong with these people. You laugh for everything. Yes, yes. But that is just their culture. That's how yes, they do things. Yes. Um, so, yeah. And then the embassy, uh, they, they, they started sending a guy, but he came only twice mm -hmm. uh, to my court cases to come and listen what's happening. Um, and what, what was the main thing that... Uh, the South African embassy was saying about the whole situation? They don't actually have no control, whatever the government yeah. do. That's their law. That's the way they do things. Mm. They're just there to make sure that you are fine. And what did your boyfriend say that was back at home? Um, well, I had a lot of anger. Um, I was very, very angry and, you know, with him actually. I, that actually what threw me in a deep depression mm. because of my anger. Did he, what did he say about the whole thing? He just said, no, he had, he didn't know. He had nothing involved when he um, tried to get hold of this guy to hear what has happened to me. He couldn't find him. And then actually because the U magazine, because I entered Miss South Africa, mm. so the U magazine was there. And my boyfriend went to the U magazine and because they were asking, you know, and he gave my pictures and everything and they weren't asking, he could share what he mm. knew. 
But then after he said, I couldn't get hold of, of, of Jackson. He's just gone, mm. you know? So, um, yeah, then it was all in the newspaper. It was, <laughs> but at that time it was what? Is it Provi? Uh, uh, police file. Was it police file? Yes, I think it was Something that. like, horrible. I even was on yeah. there, you know? Because it was such a big case yeah, at such the a time. Big case, yeah. But yeah, it just made me feel so really horrible. But yeah, that is what was happening on his side. But I had, um, I blamed him for mm. a lot of things. Mm. Um, I was very, very angry with him. I had a lot of anger that actually turned me to suffer depression very badly. Mm. Um, mm. That put me in a complete down spiral which I lost hope, mm. wanted to give up on life. I didn't even care if I would die or anything. Are, are, are Thai prisons, or let me say your experience in the Thai prisons, yes. is it like what we see in movies and in the media? Um, uh, you know, obviously movies and stuff will always like dramatize things yes. much more. So but I can only share with you what I experienced. Mm. Um, you know, they play a lot of mind games. Mm. Um, they really actually want to break you mentally. Mm. Uh, so their rules change every, every day. Mm. There's no set, stable rule in that prison. Mm. You know, you can have this today, tomorrow you can't. Today you can sit there, tomorrow you can't. Mm. Uh, today uh, this is accepted in the prison, tomorrow it's not accepted. So like for example, um, they, you had to purchase everything in the prison. Mm. Your, your bedding, your uniform, your pajamas, your shoes, your food your medication, if you need an operation, you need to pay for it yourself. So if you don't have money in that situation, you're really gonna suffer because you have to purchase everything, everything. Wow, so it's not like the prisons in South Africa no, where everything is no. done for you, including free education. No, no, not at all, not at all. Because I even tried to study because I got a sponsorship to study psychology mm. from the Ohio University. Mm. And they gave me such a hard time, the way they tear my books apart, the way they prolong my assignments, that made it very difficult. But I did go into South African prisons here in South Africa and I could see there's a complete difference. I went mm. into Cape Town as well and um, it is really different. Like the way they can, they dress, they, they have, their hair, their nails, their, um, they design their own uniform and the freedom they have. I mean, I went to the kitchens, I look at the food. I mean, prison is prison, it's never home. Yeah. You know, but just yeah. the comparison. Like we slept on the floor, uh, I had a 16 inch space. Uh, so your legs is entwined with somebody else, comes mm. up to your hip. Yeah. So, and you have to check the person sleeping at the bottom if, they may, if there's no open marks, because we are all mixed. If somebody have a virus or whatever they mm. have, you have to make sure there's nobody with an open cut or an open wound. Oh, I gosh. had to learn how to sleep with a mask on my face yeah. because I don't know the next person, do they have uh, 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 any kind of a virus or bacteria or anything. Mm. I had to put like cardboards to my face. I had to teach myself how to breathe in a mask, how to, how to sleep in that, that box here by my head, just to mm. protect myself. Mm. And I learned how to sleep with my legs crossed up so I don't touch the other person on the other side. I struggled in the beginning because I'm used to a big bed and I sleep all over, mm. but now I have to confine myself to this space. And if you, you don't want to touch the person because we sleep like sardines. No, and it makes sense what you're saying because you're not trying to get sick in a Thai prison you have at to. all, at all. Because of financially, mm. it's a problem if you don't have the finances because you have to pay for everything. Mm. You had to, I, that's where I learned to, to listen to my body. You need to take care of yourself. You need to make sure the best way you can to take care mm. of yourself, exercise. Uh, I started even training, doing exercise in the prison, teaching the whole prison because I found that it's a way of releasing your stress. Mm. It's a way of helping yourself. Um, so I, I, I tried to do whatever I could to help myself to survive in the place. So obviously you have to be finding things to keep yourself busy so that you, 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 you know, have a sense of purpose even though you were sentenced to death, sentenced to life in a Thai prison. Yeah, no, it was a matter of really um, survival in there. Um, even though you know, the struggles we face inside. And I, it took me some time because I, I hated the place and I didn't, or even the people as well. I didn't even want to learn the language because I didn't want to understand them. Um, because so, obviously the people are mainly the authority. Yes, the Thai. Uh, so when you meet an officer and you walk, you can't just pass an officer. You need to sit down on the floor mm. until she passes you. How many mm. officers is going to pass you? Mm. You know, so because our lunch hour was only a, uh, an hour, but they cut it down to an half an hour. Um, 
so you know to purchase your food. So wait, when you say your lunch hour is like half an hour, what are you doing in the other times? Um, I worked in a computer room. Yes. Um, so the 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 hour we had is for you. You need to go and buy your food to eat. Mm. Or they also were giving food. Um, it was like brown rice. Brown rice is healthy rice. Yes. But then they, the brown rice wasn't clean. Yes. Uh, because we had inmates cooking and they don't clean it very properly. Yes. And then also the food was like, I never knew you could boil a cucumber. So they just throw things in water, like an onion, a tomato, you know, and this big cut up and a, a, a fish or something. Yes. So, but it's not properly clean. Yes. So like when you get the food, so they make a lot of uh, uh, soup, soup stuff. Yes. And they will actually have pumpkin uh, with uh, uh, with pork. They yes. eat a lot of pork. No, I don't eat pork. Yes. So what I will do is they make like a curry. Yes. So it's like a lot of soup. So I would take the pumpkin out of it, yes. wash it, and then take the inside out. And then, you know how we eat it with sugar? Yes. And that's how I would do it like that to be able. And we will take things out, clean the vegetables, wash it, and then you were able to eat it, to, to wow. it can be more cleaner. But as the directors were changing, the food improved mm. because we got like better uh, directors, you know, that just traveled the world. This one director, she was really, really good. She really came to make a lot of improvements in regards to the food especially. Mm. So our food mm. was better. Um, and so now I, I want to jump to to the part where, because obviously there are a lot of cultural nuances yes, that you had to deal definitely. with. Um, and obviously uh, there's a big mental, psychological thing that you had to deal with in yes, that time. Definitely. Talk to me about what the pregnancy was like in that situation. And when, you know, and uh, obviously we're going to chat to you. When was uh, she yeah, eventually sure. born? Okay. Um, mm, not very nice. Uh, it was very humid, very hot. And the uniform we were wearing was making me itch. I was itching. Mm. Um, so... Uh, they had factories there. There's mm. a lot of factories in the prison, so they make like the army clothing. Uh, I mean, a lot of clothing that being sold outside in mm. Thailand is being made in the prison. Mm. So, um, so uh, they had the lighter material. Like we had blue if you sentence, is brown if you're not sentence. So I, I this lady, and she, I couldn't handle it. To make me a, a little short dress just to so I can just have freedom. Yes, yes. Uh, so I don't itch because I'm having a rash because I'm yes. itching. So it's illegal. You don't make stuff like that. Yes. But um, then I had these two dresses that I was wearing because I was seeing others who was pregnant were wearing yes. them. So then I've made it. So they were always giving us problems with it. But later they just left us because they could understand the heat was too much. Yes. And then also when I started having contractions, I didn't know I was having contractions. Um, was this I, your, and it was your first child? Yes. So you'd never experienced no, this before? No, never. So yeah. I'm thinking... Because it's October season, it's raining season, there's no winter in Thailand at all. Yeah. They don't have winter. It's only in one, uh, um, like October, they have like a, they call it a monsoon. It's the raining season. Mm. So when it rains a lot and it's a little bit cold. Mm. Uh, so we, we don't have warm clothing at all. So it's like the short, short stuff that you're wearing. And um, so I was just saying, like, this cold is making my back pain. Mm. I'm having pain. So one lady came in and, and she sat next to me and she looked at me and she says to me, you're not having normal pain, you're having contractions. I mm. said, what do you mean? Mm. She said, you're going to have a baby. So when she said it, I freaked out completely. I started crying. I'm alone. I'm far away from home. It's my first baby. I'm young. I don't know what to do. Was that your due date even? I didn't even know. I don't know. Mm. I didn't know what was due date or not. Mm. But uh, I started having the contractions and... Then I completely freaked out. I just, I completely cried. I was just like panicking. Yeah. And then there was this American lady. She came, uh, she had, uh, Diana, she had a, ba a baby in the prison. Mm. And she said to me, listen here, I want to tell you something. This is prison. This is not South Africa. Yeah. So you need to get yourself together. They're going to take you outside to that outside hospital. And you're going to give birth there. You're going to be alone. So now you listen to me. And I'm so grateful for this woman. I, I just thought she's crazy, but you know, she did a good thing. And then she said to me, you're gonna go outside. You're gonna go to the delivery room. I want you to focus on the color, on the person, on the thing. You focus. And remember, it doesn't matter what happened, you remain calm. Remember, you're fighting for your life and for your child's life. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm leaving you with. And she just caused me like to stop crying. And, and then she said, now, now look what I'm doing. So she's showing me how to breathe. Mm. And she's showing me how to push the baby out. I mean, just a quick, uh, uh, overrun that she gave me there and, and then she just left and then I had pain the whole night 
and they took me out the next morning. So had you gone to a doctor at all the whole time for your pregnancy? You weren't taking vitamins, nothing? No, 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 they had a... Um, uh, a gynae? No, uh, they had a, a volunteer doctor. Was, he was uh, over 60. Yes. So he did voluntary work at the prison. Yes. So he was the one who was seeing me. So then it was an inmate who was checking on me. Wow. There was no doctor. It was an inmate. She, she was there the whole time. And, um, and every time that she wanted to check me, I would freak out. Mm. And eventually the next day, they, they took me outside. Um, I was at the back of a, a, a bucky, and I had to sit uh, between this one officer's legs. I used mm. to sit like that. And they were driving to me. So all the way, they stopped at the hospital. And when we got into the hospital, so everywhere I had to go, everybody moved away from me. Where I, they, they had to take my weight, they had to check me, everybody moved away from me. You know mm. how that felt, like mm. I had some contagious disease. Mm. I, I, you know, I was just like, I felt so embarrassed and so ashamed and degraded. Mm. And then they t I took me in the room, they gave me some clothing and she said to me, uh, bathroom. So I'm like, where? There, down. That's how she said, and I'm walking against the wall trying to breathe, stop and breathe, stop and breathe. Eventually, I got to a bathroom. So when I got to the bathroom, this is now, I got arrested in April. Mm. In October is the first time I looked at myself. There was a little mirror. And I haven't seen, seen myself. myself. Wow. And when I looked at myself, I felt so sorry for the girl that I'm looking at. Yeah. I started crying. And um, so I changed my clothing. And when I changed my clothing, I just took the shower. And I just showered myself from the top to the bottom mm. uh, because then the blood started running already. And I started just showering myself and I walked out like that. And when I got to them, I, I don't understand the language, but they were shouting me. I could hear. And then they just gave me something to change right there and took me in. So when they took me in the delivery room, there was a, uh, 16 students, eight boys, eight girls, mm. who was going to experiment on me because I'm a prisoner. Wow. And there was one doctor that was guiding them what to do. Mm. But you know, to my advantage, they spoke English mm. and that helped me. Mm. So um, I was in a lot of pain and um, they were trying to take my blood and they were struggling, these students and stuff, but I was so weak and exhausted. And then she told me to push the baby out. I said, I can't, I'm, I'm, I don't have strength. Mm. I'm weak, give me pillows mm. because I'm laying flat on my back. I can't breathe properly. Mm. I said, please just give me pillows. If you give me pillows, I can breathe mm. and then I can get strength. Mm. And they said, no, we don't give pillows. This is how you give birth. Mm. I said, I can't. So I was just laying there. I couldn't. Mm. I was so weak. And the next thing they did was they started humming. I was like, what's wrong with these people? They are crazy. Mm. They started humming and they started going, mm, mm. And did it help? No, I thought they're crazy. <laughs> I was just like, what's wrong with these people? I'm about to give birth and yeah. they're starting to hum here. Yeah. But I didn't understand. Yeah. And then eventually when she, the doctor came and she said, Vanessa, you're taking too long. You're going to cause complications. Yeah. So she got on top of the bed, stood over me, put her hands on my tummy and she said to me, I'm going to push the baby out. You need to help me. Mm. Um, I said to her, I'm very weak. I can't. I have no strength. Mm. She says, Vanessa, you're going to cause complications. They had to like cut me like two times. And then I just turned my turned my body, I grabbed this student next to me, I put my face in her stomach and I screamed. Mm. And okay, then the baby was there and they took her away. They just say girl and they took her. And then while they were still busy with me. Did they tell you what they're going to be doing? Mm -mm, nothing. So there you was, still no, don't know what's no going on? No explanations, no yeah. nothing. So then I started shivering. I was getting so cold. I said to her, I'm freezing. Mm. Can I have a blanket? And she said to me, there's no blankets here. This is a low class hospital. Mm. And they gave me lights. They put lights on my body to make me warm. Mm. And um, so while they were busy me and they said to me, okay, now we're done with you. You need to go. Because I'm an inmate, I cannot stay in the prison. I cannot stay in the hospital. Yeah. So they took me out. I have never seen her. So when I went out and we got to the, 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 the bucky and at the back they have a van, like a nothing, just nothing. And then she, and they carried me. And they, before they put me in, they, she was wrapped in a pink towel. Mm. I could only see this little face. Mm. I was like, how do I even know this is my child? <laughs> you know, and they carried her upside down. And they just swept her face through my face. And then they took her. And I was laying at the back of, of, of this bucky. And you know, the ride all the way to the prison was so horrible for me. Mm. I could not tolerate the pain. Mm. So the pain was so severe, I collapsed. It's not just pain though, it's everything that's going everything on. Everything that's yeah, going with yeah. it. So 
I woke up in the prison hospital, uh, and when I woke up, she was laying next to me, but she wasn't breathing properly. Mm. She was she had this wheezing in her chest, mm. and I looked and I opened the towel just want to see if all the fingers and everything is there and nothing is missing. So I was checking, 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 and. Um, Everything was there, but she wasn't breathing properly. So mm. I didn't understand what was going on. So this one Thai lady came in and came to take her. And I said to her, what is wrong with the baby? And she just looked at me and she took the child. And I started screaming and I said to her, what is wrong with baby? And she just said, baby, drink water. And I'm thinking, what is this woman? What is she saying? Mm -hmm. And only afterwards, I found out afterwards, they were taking her to pump the fluid out from her. Oh, I, I was taking too long. Mm. to push her out. Yes. So she swallowed the fluid. Yes, yes, so that this sense. is the reason why they kept on taking her to pump it out yes. from her, which I didn't understand at that particular time. Next time on Unpacked. If she doesn't go, they're going to put in an orphanage in Thailand. I will go to South Africa, but you have to come soon. I felt like a mistake. I was crying out for help, but no one heard it. I'm really going home. What was your reuniting like? You push through, mm. no matter what. I love my life. I have compassion and I just love it. Thank you so much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.